so hello everybody. My name is Evgeny. Uh, I am head of platform engineering team in Duality. And uh, I'm going to tell you about how we are use, uh, uh, using Conductor in our secure data collaboration platform. So uh, I will start my presentation a bit about the duality and uh, uh, our product. Uh, so uh, the age of uh, data start, started many years ago. The need to collect and to store the data triggered the golden age of uh, data warehouses and databases. Availability of data opened new opportunities for analysis and business intelligence. Business intelligence and the decision support system provided sophisticated reports and pivots analyzed the collected data for trends and for the correlations. This tool provided the good visibility on the past and the present. But last decade, data, data science and machine learning applications started to use collected data to predict the future. Organizations that know how to use data, how to monetize it, to derive its sign on it, lead the digital world today, and innovators already seek out technology that enables uh, unify, join, analyze, and share the data securely. Data collaboration is the next big milestone in data evolution. Imagine a world when one financial institution can share data with another financial institution while presenting privacy that can help save money for their customers and mitigate risks for fraud and money laundering schemes. Or a world where you can share information across healthcare institutions leading to accelerate clinical trials. This is not easily done today because of privacy and intellectual property concerns and regulation concern, constraints. In duality, we enable the collaboration while the private and sensitive data is still protected using duality secure plus privacy preserving data collaboration platform. This achieved by exposing and processing only the encrypted data while sensitive plain text data is never exposed to, to participation participants. So how it works? Duality platform provides data analysts with a full visibility and description of the available data, which ready to be securely shared by the collaboration participants. Using the user interface or other APIs, the data analyst defines the computation parameters and initiates the computation. Upon the request, data owners encrypt their data and the uh, uh, special evaluation key, which is used for computation, built from all data owner keys. The evaluation key is shared between participants and allows to perform operation on the encrypted data without decrypting it. The encrypted data from multiple data owners is linked, unified, or joined together. The linkage happens on the encrypted data. There is no bitwise matching between the encrypted IDs since IDs were encrypted by uh, different keys on by different data owners. Uh, our product knows to match between encrypted IDs without decrypting them. To achieve that, Secure Plus implements a complex computation protocol that involves all collaboration parties. After the encrypted data from multiple sources and linked to, is uh, linked, the analytics or machine learning process is applied on the encrypted data. Data is still encrypted during the entire process. It is not decrypted even uh, for a very short time. And the results are obtained in the encrypted form. The computation fail phase is also rely on contribution of multiple parties to achieve better performance and better scalability. When the computation is finished, the encrypted results are shared between participants for the decryption process. A single party cannot decrypt the results alone. The participation of other parties is required to perform the decryption. This way, data owners still have control on who and how can get the final computation results. And in the end, only authorized participant can merge a partial decrypted results and get the plain tech results available for the further usage. Sounds like a magic, huh? isn't it? 
The next slides will describe how uh, this is actually works under the hood. Duality solution is based on fully homomorphic encryption. Fully homomorphic encryption is a form of encryption that permits computation on the encrypted data without decrypting it. The results of the computation is obtained in the encrypted form, and when decrypted, it is identical to the result of the corresponding computation being performed on the original data. This diagram presents the relationship between the plain text and the ciphertext words. Uh, for example, X and Y are regular platen inputs. E and E of X and E of Y are the corresponding encrypted inputs obtained by the homomorphic encryption. FC is uh, homomorphic computation on the encrypted ciphertext, and F is a corresponding uh, mathematical operation on the original data. So while decrypted, the result of FC is equivalent to FX. The actual process that happens behind the mentioned steps is very complicated. The key generation process for multi-party computation, the private joint computation, interactive bootstrapping, decryption, all these phases, uh, all these phases of the end-to-end -end process implement complex distributed computation protocols and require coordination and orchestration between parties. The protocols implement data processing and data exchange schema defined by dynamic direct directed graph, which is not necessarily acyclic. The actual workflow graph is often uh, dependent on the intermediate results and need to be uh, created and modified dynamically during the uh, workflow execution. Having, having all these requirements, we chosen the approach, approach of centralized uh, collaboration management and orchestration. After the analysis and the feature comparison between various open source workflows orchestrators, we have chosen Conductor to be integrated as an orchestration engine in Secure Plus platform to manage the computation process. The key factors uh, for, our, for our choice were ability of Conductor to run loops, ability to create dynamic tasks, dynamic force and dynamic sub workflows. Secure Plus admin software, which runs in the middle, includes conductor server and UI in its deployment. Uh, the secure plus admin deployment include multiple services, including those who are responsible for authentication and being pro proxy for communication with conductor. All services, including conductor, are deployed on the dedicated servers using Docker Compose. In our deployments, many workers call the availability task very frequently. In order to reduce the load on conductor, we decide to cache the queue in the separate microservice and to update this, uh, this cache periodically. Every worker sends an API request to the secure pass admin and specifies what task this worker is, in the, is interested to handle. The management service looks for the corresponding available task in the cached queue and responds to the worker. If worker, gets the responsible, uh, the, if worker gets the response with available task, it pulls for the specific task and start the execution. We decided not to write conductor metadata in JSON format, but created a set of uh, functional and classes that will generate it. Our code generates task and workflow definition in the runtime, taking in consideration participants configuration and the computation parameters. Then for each next computation, the workflow is reused. Many task parameters are dynamically configurable. Workflow fragments are generated by helper function and reusable between different workflows. For example, this short code fragment generates more than 150 lines of JSON metadata. And this is example of typical workflow so we can see the workflow, uh, uh, the, the, the workflow presentation on the left side. On, on the middle, uh, we have a workflow timeline. It includes many dynamic sub-workflows, forks, and loops. 
The horizontal axis here represents time, and the tasks are spread over the vertical axis. So if we zoom this uh, small fragment, we can see uh, many different tasks represented by different uh, colors. Each color represents uh, uh, another participant. We can see that some tasks are, uh, are handled in parallel concurrently, and some are executed uh, uh, in a sequential way. We are using task to domain mapping to assign specific tasks to the specific collaboration participants. So if you remember uh, five phase that I mentioned at the beginning, we can detect them in this flow. So in the very beginning, we start with uh, that data encryption. We actually uh, implemented by uh, build number of small tasks. Then we have uh, data linkage, a very long computation process that uh, includes uh, many iterations and many interaction between participants and uh, partial decrypt and decrypt and then. Any questions about uh, our usage? Awesome. Um, I am coming back. I'm turning on my video, I think. Um, but that was a great presentation. Like I've always been, really curious on how data analysis is, you know, how data is being sent and how workflows can be used to transmit data um, and then process the data. So um, I guess I have a question for you with the big slide with the, you know, with all of the text and all the workflows, if you don't mind sharing your screen again. Yeah, sure. Okay. It's just uh, back just one. Second. Yeah. One, yes. Oh, well, mm -hmm. more the one, the one after it. So you had in that middle, in the big box in the middle. Is it? Are you doing like iterative machine learning tests on things and waiting until it converges to a specific place before you stop the workflow? Is that sort of what's happening here? Yes, actually, uh, this training, this is the training. Yes, this example of the mm -hmm. uh, machine learning training. And uh, multiple interactions here is really an example of uh, 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 interactive learning uh, that uh, for every iteration uh, creates uh, a results and loss functions. And loss function can be decrypted uh, and represented to the customer. But while this entire process, all the data still in encrypted way. It's still encrypted. Okay, so there's also yeah. manual steps in here. So a whole a round will be done. You'll decrypt some of the results. No, no. This is fully automatic. This is fully automatic. It's so, fully automatic. Okay. Uh, you know, I can maybe I can display uh, some real example. Let me a second. Uh, to open it. Uh, okay. Can you see the user interface? Yeah. Okay, so this is our product. This is the view of uh, data analyst. And this data analyst wants to start uh, a new training process. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So data analyst can see the data available uh, for the processing. It belongs to different data owners. Right. And uh, it wants to start a linear regression training. So data is selected. Various parameters of the training okay. are specified. Training hyperparameters like uh, gradient descent method, learning rate, momentum, all these parameters that are relevant to, to the machine learning. And new session is started. And that's a conductor workflow that you just started. Yeah, and the conductor, I will show uh, the conductor workflow that started. Uh, just a second.
okay this is the workload that just been started and we can see that we have a long workflow with many different branches and loops and dynamic uh, dynamically spawned tasks that will uh, will be executed so different ta tasks are executed on different participant premises so uh, we will not wait uh, for the entire process to complete, but during the processes, the analyst can see the loss function during the model converge and the final results are obtained in the tier form. Nice. So that's at the end when it's finally all the data is decrypted or the, the answers are decrypted, you can see the results. Only the answers are decrypted right. and the, uh, even for the uh, to get the answers, actually, active uh, participation of all data owners is required. So in this way, actually, all data owners can full control on who gets the data and who gets the result. Nice. So in my configuration, uh, I don't need manual intervention, so everything can ha happen automatically. But if you want some governments, we can configure that uh, once uh, uh, session is started. It will not actually be done until uh, data owner will approve the computation on this side. So we have also government mechanism, but this mechanism is not related actually to the orchestration. Right. So, no, that's just that's super cool. Yeah. No, I think that's fabulous. Yeah. Does anyone else have some questions? How long do, is that going to this? Uh, workflow going to take if we let it go all the way through? Or uh, it, uh, depends on uh, the data size and the model complexity. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, homomorphic computation is significantly slower than uh, you know, regular computation in the clear numbers. And the homomorphic encryption uh, caused the data uh, uh, volume to be significantly uh, bigger than regular numbers. Uh, this computation may take uh, dozens of seconds up to a few minutes, but uh, some more uh, complex computation can take uh, even dozens of minutes. Depends awesome. on the, the complexity. Dozens of minutes, got it. So we have a couple questions. The first mm -hmm. one is, what are the challenges your team had when you started using Conductor? Um, we started using Conductor about uh, two and a half years, years ago. I think uh, one of the challenges uh, was to figure out how to use it in a correct way because of the complexity of workflows. So it was many, you know, try and error how to build the dynamic uh, fork, how to build dynamic workflow, how to, to run a loop. Um, Honestly, uh, sometimes the what, what we found in the documentation wasn't work for us, but uh, the examples and the tests in the conductor code were actually the more reliable source for, uh, uh, for understanding how things should, should work. Uh, Great. Um, you know, so sometimes uh, 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 understanding what go, what, what going wrong, wrong was not so simple. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, understand why some uh, input is not passed to output of other task or uh, some task is not uh, handled by some specific uh, work and when expected to be handled. Uh, but finally, we I think we resolved most of uh, most of our issues. Awesome. And and I'm working on the docs and, and so is Peter and a bunch of other people. So we're going to get that up and running for anyone new. James also asks, do you have current challenges that you're seeing with Conductor? Um, visualization of loops would be very helpful. It was an uh, older version of UI, but in current version, it's still not available. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes I switch to the older version only to, to understand better what happens in loops. Again, because uh, the flow is built dynamically. So it's sometimes hard for me to, to, to know what will be actual flow for the actual data. So only after running it, I am looking to the generated flow to understand what actually happens. Great. Uh, 
And we have two more questions. One is, mm -hmm. um, what does your current conductor setup look like? Um, and what databases are using, did you consider and why? Yeah, so currently we are using a uh, single instance with uh, MySQL based uh, persistency and uh, Elasticsearch uh, and Redis uh, for locking. Uh, we are considering uh, getting rid of Redis for locking uh, and to enabling uh, local log. Uh, we tested the uh, high availability uh, with, uh, uh, with Dynamit in the past. So far, we, uh, we, we are not using high availability in production, but it's something that uh, the, the, the requirement for this may come in, uh, in some future. So we consider uh, enabling this option. Uh, and then we have one more question that goes back, mm -hmm. is also database related. Um, Anoop asks, it says you use Redis and MySQL. And I think you answered part of this, but could you elaborate on how these different components are used? Um, MySQL just configured uh, that MySQL will be used uh, as a, for a persistency instead of uh, uh, Default, which is uh, Dynamit. So we're running uh, uh, Docker, uh, dedicated MySQL Docker that connected uh, to the conductor. And uh, same for Redis. We're just running a separate Docker. And conductor log is uh, uh, configuration is referred to this uh, Redis instance. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Um... If there are any other questions, you can do that now. Um, it's, thank you. Great talk. Duality looks like a solid product. Thank so, you very much. And, and thank you, Jenny, for the great talk. It was super interesting. And I'm going to pick your brain on some data science stuff in a, in a, in a little bit, because uh, I've got some, some questions at some point that I need to figure out.